All right, I would like to thank all of you for coming this afternoon here in Boulder. It is June 23rd, 2018, uh, just for the record. And uh, we're going to take a quick trip through the cosmology and then a deep dive into what our folks at the CIA call WSFM. Not a radio station, it stands for Weird Science and Frickin' Magic. All the classified technologies, where they're located, when they were developed, how they've been deployed, et cetera, and so on. So uh, I'd like to thank first some folks who've made this possible, University of Colorado School here, Wolf uh, Law School, which has provided the facility, uh, Neil for his webinar help, uh, Lara and Ricky and Marcel and Grant, all the folks out front who are our volunteers, thank you all for making this happen. And a big thank you all for coming here in person to spend your Saturday afternoon with us. Uh, I would like to uh, start by saying that, give you a little bit of context of why I'm doing these last few webinars and seminars. Um, there's a need at this point for me to do a brain dump, for lack of a better word, out into the public domain uh, ahead of some things that the public needs to know. Um, these are some of these are subjects that I've talked about peripherally, but I think it needs to go into in more depth. Uh, to understand where this knowledge has come from, Many of you have seen the Disclosure Project witnesses, and there will be parts of this information scattered throughout their testimony, uh, but I'm trying to pull it together into a three-hour condensed package so you kind of get your minds around it. Keep in mind that only one in 10 Disclosure Project military intelligence and corporate witnesses, about one in 10, have been willing to go on videotape and be identified to the public. 90% do not want to be. Um, there are some recent ones since the movie Unacknowledged came out that have surfaced that are uh, really the most important yet uh, and most current who have been in certain unacknowledged special access projects, which are the deep black projects, that's the proper name, that's where the title came from, Unacknowledged. And I want to put together for all of you today an understanding of the cosmology that's gotten very mixed up in the UFO subculture with the knowledge that I've gained since 1990, uh, having been dealing with various people in the intelligence community, which I will call IC from here on, and military and corporate world who have worked in this space dealing with extraterrestrial technology. Uh, zero point energy, extraordinary electromagnetic field propulsion and communication systems, et cetera. There's a, over 950 of these top secret sources that I have now. And we started out with about a dozen. And by the disclosure project, we had a few hundred, about 70, 80 came forward on videotape. It's now 10 times that. And with that has been some frustration for me, and I want to share it with you. Um, because in an ideal world, all of those people would come forward, name, rank, and serial number. But we don't live in an ideal world. And as a physician, I respect the confidential information that people give me. So if it's confidential and they ask that I keep their uh, name, and identity confidential, I keep it confidential. That, however, puts me in a very bad position because I'm walking around in my little random access memory uh, with 28 years of information from about a thousand of these people. And that's hard. <laughs> really hard. You know, you're just going, ah, how do I get this out to the public? So what I'm trying to do today and in the next few uh, uh, webinars that I'll do over the next six months or so is to provide as much of that information to the public uh, as, as we can. And I think it's important for people to appreciate that we're not, I'm not in a position to, to 
force anyone to identify themselves. What I will try to do is give you their provenance, what command they were in, the kinds of information they were read into. Read into means briefed in military speak. And uh, how I came about that w when appropriate. In general, I think it's more important to focus on the knowledge and the information than the, than the source per se. Um, I don't repeat things from questionable sources. Um, I question, you know, everyone. They have to provide me proof that they were in the command. They have to give me their badges, send them to me, sometimes physically send them to me if it's a classified badge. And I have to see this. So that's what I rely on. And that's why the Disclosure Project has been and is the gold standard for people uh, all over the world for finding out about this issue. That's really what I want to share, and it's from those sorts of sources and methods, as they say in the intelligence community. But before we can even get into that, we have to start with something more fundamental, and that is what is the thing called reality that we live in, the cosmos? And I know this sounds like, well, what, what does that have to do with these unacknowledged special access projects and their technologies and facilities? Everything. Because if you don't understand what's sitting in front of you on the screen right here, there's no way you're going to understand the kinds of technologies we're going to cross over into very quickly today. So first, I want to go through this concept of everyone knows about the conventional universe, 3D, 4D, if you call it, consider time a dimension, some do, some don't. Uh, it's the material universe, space time, matter, light and dark matter, dark energy, et cetera, and so on. That's what astrophysicists, star systems, galaxies, um, subatomic particles, conventional physics, and conventional understanding. Then there's the conscious universe, and there are other dimensions connected to the conscious universe. And you see where I've done sort of an overlap. So we have a physical body, but we're conscious, and we can be aware of awareness. And because we can become aware of awareness, we can remote view, we can see the future, see the past, uh, and of course the masters and rishis of old could teleport, materialize, dematerialize, etc. So all conscious, higher, intelligent life forms have the ability to manifest. That's a strange sound, like from that <laughs> horror movie. It have the ability. <laughs> have the ability to do. Uh, affect the physical cos world and the physical cosmos in ways that an tr interstellar, transdimensional, extraterrestrial civilization can't. This is lesson number one. It's a hard lesson. It's a really deep one. So if you can imagine all the stories you've heard of the masters uh, of, of old, or even people in the modern era who have levitated, well, you can do a, le a levitation, mass cancellation, so-called anti-gravity, through resonant field electromagnetic systems. Now let's talk about remote viewing. Everybody's heard of remote viewing, CIA programs, DARPA, DIA. I know a lot of these guys. Well, that's the ability to be a seer and use consciousness to see something at a remote distance or a remote point in space-time. But that can be done through augmentation using electromagnetic systems which is what interstellar civilizations have and covert programs have. This is the part that you're not going to hear and see in Hollywood. And that's what you're going to hear about today. So you'll see that I put that extraterrestrial civilizations, all of them that are higher intelligent sentient life forms, that's how I'm defining this. They're capable of being aware of awareness and humans. And then there's this subsection here covert technologies that are augmented by the study of ET systems and transdimensional stagecraft. These are the ones that are going to be a big deep dive in a few moments. Understand? 
because it isn't just, everyone thinks that the secret technologies have to do with Lockheed Martin and Northrop's and Boeing's anti-gravity black triangles and flying saucers and things like that, which they do have and have had since the 50s, perhaps a little sooner in terms of prototypes or a little earlier. However, this part has not been looked at by the public. And this is what I want to pull the curtain back. 